On ABC News, World News Saturday, here's Carol Simpson. Good evening. In Washington today, 35,000 civil rights demonstrators marched in protest of Supreme Court decisions they say turned back the clock on affirmative action programs. The march and rally was organized by the NAACP, and protesters took their cue from another similar demonstration, which took place 72 years ago. Kathleen Delasky has our report. They spoke not a word. It was almost eerie. Arriving from all over the country, the marchers were here to recreate an historic silent demonstration in 1917, when 8,000 blacks marched to New York to protest lynchings and Jim Crow laws. We march today as they marched in that first silent march 72 years ago. We march today to send a message. Today, the issue is the Supreme Court and these four decisions by the newly conservative majority. The marchers say these affirmative action and discrimination cases turn back the clock on civil rights. It, they've made it virtually impossible to prove discrimination when discrimination is clear. They've made it more difficult to, to get equality in jobs and education. Their decisions are just an enormous step backwards. Led by members of the NAACP, the 50 groups represented in the march stopped at the Supreme Court to pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. And amen. They don't expect to change the opinions of the Supreme Court. The purpose of this march and rally was to call on Congress to enact legislation which could override the court decisions. It's not clear that there will be enough supporting Congress for such laws, but these people say they will keep applying pressure. I was hoping that the struggle that we had during the 1960s would have paved the way for our kids, but it's clear now our kids are going to have to take to the streets just as we did. The activists here say the hard-fought battles for anti-discrimination laws, quota systems, and minority business programs will have to be fought all over again. Kathleen Delasky, ABC News, Washington. The National Organization for Women launched a five-day campaign for abortion rights in New Jersey today. Now President Molly Yard and some 200 supporters gathered on the Atlantic City boardwalk where they were... Voyager's tape recorder dumped some beautiful pictures last night, a real tour. Scientists were waiting to see Neptune from the rear with the sun shining through the rings so the dust particles lit up. Going to the planet, they thought they had two rings in sight. Here are the new pictures. Do you see three rings or four? People doing the research tend to lean toward four. This picture was colorized to bring out the hazes of methane, the red edges there. Clouds drift above the planet's visible surface, accenting similarities to Earth. Other features accent the differences. That's a huge storm in the south, one of two on the planet. And by the way, the colors are drawn from images that first look like this. And then there's Neptune's mysterious backward orbiting moon, Triton. It's a strange object. Uh, that, that, that surface is very, very strange. Very strange, with nitrogen and methane ice on its surface, volcanoes that once spewed frozen chemicals instead of molten lava, and a haze of nitrogen and methane around it. And uh, I suspect they're going to have to explain it because that's the way it is. And explaining it is what this is all about, because this is nature in its very rawest form. The planets they're looking at are out there existing under the basic laws of physics. These people are trying to understand how they manage themselves that far from the sun. Carol? Jim, it was quite a wonderful picture show. I guess <laughs> one of the most interesting things we learned from Voyager is that Neptune has rings. How significant a finding is that? Well, when you find rings around a planet, you find some history of its construction. Here is debris that may have been left over from the formation of the planet that's being held by its magnetic field, or perhaps this is some object that's been captured by its magnetic field, captured into orbit, and has later collapsed. You can tell a lot by looking at the rings. It says a lot about the environment of that place. It's obviously been a spectacular journey that we've shared with Voyager through those pictures and data it sent back to Earth, and I'm sure everybody's enjoyed the show, but tell us what the real importance of the mission will be. Well, for you and me, uh, maybe not too much, except to satisfy our basic curiosity. The real payoff is for the children. When you and I were kids, there was not very much known about uh, the outer planets at all. As a matter of fact, Neptune had less than a half a page in our science book. Today, look at the history that is being rewritten and being rewritten instantly as these pictures come through. 
that people are learning a great deal. This is the end of an exploratory era, that is the end of Voyager, but a new one has already begun with the Mariner flight to Venus. There'll be more exploration through the rest Newsweek of the magazine poll of 600 adults. Two thirds of those polled think Rose belongs in Cooperstown. 22% said keep him out. And how are the Cincinnati Reds players and fans reacting to Rose's exile? Here's Dan Noyes. Last night's Reds game was the first since Pete Rose was banned from baseball. The only trace of the former manager was his number on the lone banner in center field. For almost three decades, Reds baseball was Rose baseball. Now that he's gone, there is disagreement among fans whether Rose is still a hero. A good ball player doesn't necessarily mean a good coach, and Pete's made some questionable moves. He's also disgraced the town. <laughs> we all love Pete Rose no matter what. I sure miss him. Though. Rose's influence has been felt most by the team, which has been hobbled by injuries and hampered by the controversy surrounding their manager. We're supposed to be able to put those distractions, you know, out of our mind and be able to focus on what we have to do that night, but, uh, you know, we're human beings and it's not that easy. Making it easier is the job of Tommy Helms, who replaces Rose as manager. Uh, as far as me, I'm just going to have to manage like Tommy Helms thinks he should manage, and that's, that's the only way I can do it. We have to go forward with baseball and forget about all this other stuff. That's all we heard about. However, we will be hearing a lot more as the FBI and the IRS continue to investigate Rose for tax evasion. He is still making money selling autographed baseballs and bats on cable TV, but has lost a $500,000 a year manager's salary. And Rose's tainted image could well cost him profitable endorsement contracts. This is the birthplace of the major leagues, a town steeped in baseball history. Now Pete Rose is just a part of it and fans here are ready to get on with the game. Dan Noyes, A.